How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now, when it comes to digital multimeters or just multimeters, a lot of us homeowners have very little experience with those. But if you spend a few minutes with me here, I'm gonna give you the basics you need and just having a simple unit and a little understanding can really raise your troubleshooting ability in your electrical system, and that can save you hundreds and hundreds of dollars in not having to call in the professionals. So let's jump into it. So I would be assuming you already have an outlet tester where you can simply test the outlet and make sure it is correctly wired and also test a GFCI to see if it trips correctly, like this one just did, and also a non-contact voltage tester so you can test to see if we still have power going to this junction box before we service it so we can turn off that breaker and service it correctly. Both of those are a must have, but we are starting to see more capable units like this RT250, which kind of combines an outlet tester and a multimeter in one. We see by a single LED that we're correctly wired. It also tells us correct on the screen, but it's starting to give us a voltage. We can see 125 volts here at this outlet. So these are handy for a quick reference, but what happens if you want more capability to test voltage, both AC and DC? What about resistance, continuity checks? That's where the multimeter comes in. So we'll go over five different functions that you need to know as a homeowner, and I'll show it across these two different units. This one by Klein Tools is the ET270. This is my favorite new meter. It's kind of purpose built for DIY homeowners. And you'll see a link right below the video for your reference. And it has a lot of the capability we're looking at. These four functions here are four of the five that we'll show, and that is AC voltage, DC voltage. This audible symbol here is a continuity check. This omega symbol is our resistance check. So those are four things you need to know. And then we'll also move over here to the ideal 61-747, which is a clamp meter, but it has all the capability and then some of this meter from a digital multimeter perspective. So this is actually my go-to now, and specifically we'll be showing how to measure current with a clamp meter and a very handy and a very handy feature that this has that a lot of different clamp meters don't is DC amperage. I use this for solar panels and troubleshooting solar. So that's specifically why I go with this one, but this one has a lot more functionality. It has two different displays as well, and it's just a more capable unit, but it is gonna cost a little bit more. So let's go ahead and dive in and measure AC voltage. So first up, we're gonna do voltage AC. That might be the most common that you'll be using for your multimeter. And depending on your screen, your brand, it'll say AC here. That's indicating we are in the voltage AC, little voltage sign there. And then I'm in auto, which is auto ranging. Best practices for an outlet, the bigger slot here is neutral. Then we have our ground prong here. And then the smaller one's gonna be your hot. You'd wanna take your black probe and either go into the ground or the neutral. And it's best to test across both of those when you're doing troubleshooting and then go ahead and bring your red probe and go into the hot side. You can see we're measuring 127.3 volts. Then I'll take that hot side out and then remove the black probe. Now, if I wanna go across the ground, I will repeat that. And this red one going into hot would always be last in for the test, 127, so we're good, and first out for your test. So why is that? Well, if I stick that red probe in and I have this other side here, we'll use the non-contact voltage tester. So we can see that we have a situation that might be dangerous with this probe, depending on what we touch it against. So I would not recommend leaving a positive probe in the hot side or any probe in the hot side while you're doing your troubleshooting. Now, additionally, if you have an intermittent failure, it seems like the voltage is dropping at certain instances and not in others. You can leave your probes connected in securely, measuring your voltage, and then maybe you need to go turn on another appliance or do something else to that circuit to see if this changes. If you do that, you need to take and adjust this. Now we are gonna hold on to our maximum voltage but specifically in that case, I would wanna look at the minimum voltage. So if I went on, turned on an appliance, I did something that adjusts the circuit and it started to adjust the voltage and maybe that was helping me find the failure mode, then this would hold on 
to the lowest voltage I saw when I adjusted things. And then when I come back, I don't have to be at the multimeter the whole time. And I can see how low did the voltage go to. That can be super handy because if I just went to the normal condition, let's go back to our auto ranging. So now we're back to auto ranging and we can see we're back to normal voltage. But if I wasn't here to witness that, I wouldn't see that the voltage actually adjusted. So that's why that max and min can be so handy while you're troubleshooting. And then a very specific note about this 270, why I think it's so nice for homeowners, it comes with this adapter that goes in all three ports and then you have a plug that you can go over to outlet testing. So it's saying plug in. So we plug in to the actual GFCI, we get our voltage out, it says it's wired correct, we see the green light. So it has a built-in outlet tester in addition to being able to do the voltages like we just did. Also, it can test. So that just tested and tested the time. It took 0.01 seconds to trip your GFCI, so that's within specs. So that is a really handy feature for homeowners, which will only come on, at least from what I've seen, this ET270 from Klein Tools. So number two of the five functions that you need to know is just gonna be the DC voltage. Some multimeters, you'll actually have a specific setting for that. Others, like this ideal clamp meter, you need to turn it to voltage, check and see what it's telling you on the screen here. It's saying AC, so I just have to press select to switch over to DC. Additionally, depending on what you're reading out, I do a lot of solar panel projects. So I made up some test probes where I just got cheap test probes and then crimped on the standard connectors for solar panels, which are MC4 connectors. So you might need to make up some probes depending on what you're doing, especially if it's a repeatable application and you want the best connection possible where the probes might fall out, but if you put custom connectors like this, and you'll be more confident with your readings. And then the ET270 has actually a focus section that ranges the voltage DC perfectly to test batteries. So it has a nine volt battery tester here. So we would just test across the positive and negative. And if you see under nine volts, you probably have a pretty drained nine volt battery. Above, you might have a little juice left. So we're above on this one. This one's still good. Now testing across this guy here, we are below. And I know this one is pretty much dead. So then the 1.5 volts is the same. If you didn't know, 1.5 volts is what AA batteries are, AAA batteries, Cs and Ds, they're all 1.5 volts. And then this one is pretty dead. So I imagine it's under 1.5 volts which is what we see here. So it just gives you a quick test for your batteries and it just ranges the voltage correctly so you get as accurate as possible. For everything else, I would use just the normal voltage DC. And let me show you automotive examples that's super handy with another Klein Tools multimeter that's a little different. We actually go ahead and set the range ideal for the 12 volt system on my truck. What you just set your selection dial to V and then press select. So you see the solid and dashed line. Now you're in DC voltage. Same way, you can change your range. Here, this is a 12 volt system, so I'll set it to a max of 99.99 volts. Then I'd put the black probe on the negative and the red probe on the positive. And I'm reading 12.92, which would indicate a strong battery. But if I wanna check my alternator, I'll start the engine and then do the same check and expect to get higher than that voltage, indicating that the alternator is actually charging the battery. And we do with 14.12 volts. So number three out of the five is continuity. Now, if you're not familiar with that, it's a super basic principle and extremely handy for DIY electrical. So we'll go ahead and go over to the audible symbol here, which is our continuity check. We'll do a few different applications which are handy around the house. This is a three-way light switch. Your power, the line would be coming here, common. And then the, in this position, it would be connected to one screw terminal and not the other. And then you would flip that operation in this other position. So to understand which one is connected at what state, you would put one test probe here on the black and then test one screw terminal. Okay, in this position, we know these two are now connected and this should not have continuity. Now, if I flip the light switch, it should flip the operation. 
So now we see continuity between these two as we flip that position. You can really use this continuity check to understand what's going on where you can't see the internal operations. Now this is a fuse. If this fuse was blown, it would not have a connection between both sides. If we want to test that it is still good, we should see continuity. And we do, so we've confirmed now that our fuse is still good. Now with extension cords, what I've done in the past is you might have a failure point that seems to be coming on and off, which usually would happen right here at your plug. So what we can do is put one test probe here, connect it up, and then one test probe on this side. So now we have continuity. What I would do is a wiggle test. So I would wiggle that end and I would expect the audible alarm to turn off if I had an internal failure. So if I heard that audible alarm as I'm moving it, going on and off like this, that would indicate mm, probably within this insulation, the sheathing here, I have some copper that is damaged and an internal failure. So that wiggle test while doing an audible continuity check is super handy for components that you think might be failing like an extension cord. So now on to number four out of five, and that's gonna be testing for resistance. Now, if you're doing electronics, obviously testing small resistors on a circuit board or something similar is gonna be super common. For homeowners, maybe you have an electric water heater and you're testing the element to see if there's any issues and you know that this element should be about 10.7 ohms because you looked up the specification. Well, we can test that out to see what we're getting here. And we're right on there at 10.6 ohm. So from a resistance standpoint, this element would still be good. Additionally, depending on what type of wire you're using, there's a cool little trick. We do know that you can look up the resistance of 1000 feet of wire. So this is THHN 14 gauge. I'm just using some little WAGO inline connectors, which are great to hold probes. So WAGO lever nuts are fantastic for holding your probes on your wires if you're troubleshooting really any sort of DIY electrical. So I'll show the link in the description along with all this other stuff for your reference for the lever nuts. Now here we see we have 0.3 ohms. We're a little challenged here because we only go to the 10th decimal place. It would be nice to go to the 100th decimal place. So I can take this 0.3, so 0.3, and divide that by 2.6 ohms per 1,000 feet at this temperature, this gauge of wire, this type of wire, copper wire, aluminum would be different. I know that is gonna be the resistance per 1,000. So I'm gonna get this fraction, and to break it down to feet, I just multiply by 1,000. So that's gonna get me an estimate just from the resistance of this spool of 115 feet. That is a little error because of our 10th decimal place and not going further out. But this is actually a 100 foot spool. So maybe you had a ton of wire from a past project. It's 14 gauge. The higher the gauge, the thinner the wire, the easiest this will be with a standard multimeter because you'll have higher resistance, a larger resistance per 1,000 feet. So it'll be easier to measure. But just a cool little trick there on estimating the length of wire from the resistance. So last up is where the clamp meter really comes in. And this is why this is my all-in-one unit is because it can do current, AC and this one specifically, the 747 can do DC. Just be careful, a lot of them will give you AC but not DC depending on which one you're getting. Now one thing to note, you can be on your amperage here, AC, so we're getting the current. A lot of people think we have a heater plugged in here, so be careful obviously if you're running an outlet and you have it out of the wall. Think they can actually clamp the Romex. So if we go around this Romex, we are not going to get a reading because the black hot and white neutral are actually canceling each other out. You have to go around just the hot side to measure that out. So here, again, you'd be very careful if you had a hot outlet, we'd be measuring that we're getting 11.5 amps through this circuit. Again, it's a heater, so it is pulling a pretty high load. I'll turn it down a little bit dropped it to 10.2 amps. 
So this is how we can actually get current running through that circuit, which can be super handy for different applications. The DC side, I do the same thing across the solar cables and then see how much current I'm getting from my solar panels. So that's why I upgraded to this one. And then a random question for you guys, what screwdriver are you guys using now around the house? This Klein Tools 15 in one is my favorite now, especially for electrical. It has the square drive bits and it has combo belts built in and no longer do the bits fall out when you pull out the little expansion here for your other bits. This is my favorite one now, but there are a ton of other options from Klein Tools and others. I'm interested in Wea and Wera. Let me know down in the comments, what is your go-to multi-bit screwdriver? Not necessarily single function, but multi-bit screwdriver. Now, if you guys are looking at electric vehicles and charging at home, you can check out one of these two videos here where we installed a 240 volt NEMA 1450 outlet to be used for a level two charger. Or you can check out this video down here where I actually installed a level two Tesla charger at home that can charge up to the max of 11 kilowatts, which is pulling 48 amps at 240 volts and about as good as you can get at home. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.